So when you're dealing with recovery or forensics options and things like that, what can you deal with? Well, this is physically addressing some of the hardware stuff because with computers physically, whenever we're working on a hard drive, we have, we're like mechanics. Physically, when I do a data recovery, I can move platters. Uh, physically, I would need this tool to move multiple platters because data stored in a cylinder, which means I write on the top of a platter, on the next part of a platter, and so on and so on, down through the cylinder. So if I turn the platters, I actually have no way of recovering that data. So you need a special tool like this to actually do a replacement, a platter replacement, or even a head replacement in some cases. So again, kind of like a mechanic versus what we're used to dealing with with maybe solid state. <coughs> then we also have, we also have, head replacements, where you can actually do something physically with the head assembly without moving a platter. This is simple to do in single platters. Simple may be the wrong word. You can do it in about 45 minutes if you know what you're doing. It takes a, a person who's never tried it before uh, a couple hours. And we also have uh, PCB board replacements, where we can do them not only live, but we can also do them physically to repair stuff or unsolder a chip and move a chip uh, and get that done. But in a flash disk, it's going to be, it's a little simpler because you can unsolder maybe just one or two chips and move them to another exact device and use this fancy soldering gun because I bet everybody's got one of those. Uh, you just solder your stuff back on. Uh, physically, it's kind of hard because some of the legs are obviously pretty small from that standpoint. There's not a lot you can do with them. It's a lot of work and you usually have to have something like a chip quick or something like that that blows hot air on a chip to remove it. But the hardest part is obviously finding an exact manufactured exactly the same way, the exact same chip specifications, the whole thing, so you can have an exact duplicate, a donor, uh, to take the chips off of, to put them onto, so you can repair a broken one of these uh, memory sticks or some other thing. Yes, sir. He said, why don't you just, basically what you're saying is kind of like image the memory chip instead. I have actually, right, right, there's some complications there. Uh, we have done it, actually. Um, John Mushhammer, one of the guys who's actually uh, done a, a talk at ShmooCon, uh, he and I have basically gone back and forth over some chips and I set some up, did some things, he did some images, we went back and forth. The hard part was all this virtualization of some of the stuff that's custom that actually the control chip is doing. You don't know the layout of the content. So you don't know where these tables are and what's actually happening. It doesn't represent it like text, like something you would just find strings and you can do something with. So there's, there, it's, it's not the same and not as easy as it sounds. And if there's multiple chips, you don't know how that content is divided up either from that standpoint. So there is some more complicated things. But obviously it gets a lot harder when you're dealing with a solid state disk, as you will see here in a second. So physically on a solid state disk, you've got a couple of simple things that are just like hard drives that you can do. You may actually just have something that's burned out that you can just solder onto the board and physically repair the drive and keep it going. <clears throat> it's not very often, I can tell you that. That's a, that's a pretty rare event. But it does happen. It happens a lot in hard drives, but not so much in solid state. Then you also have this number of chips that you would basically have to unsolder and resolder. So now it becomes infinitely more complicated than it was before. So you know, getting one or two chips, maybe you can get those right, but it's pretty easy to mess up if you've got 20 to do or 15 or something like that. It gets to be, and there's one other complication, which is you still need a donor drive. You still need one that is exactly the same one as the one you have because you're going to rip it apart so that you can take all these chips and move it to it so you can repair whatever's broken piece by piece. So we've now become less of a mechanic in trying to fix a mechanical problem and more of an electrical engineer and having to have some other skills that we didn't have before. So this makes our job infinitely harder both for forensics and for data recovery because, you know, from a recovery standpoint, I do get drives in from a forensic standpoint to repair. But that's not going to be so easy here. You may have a lot more reliability because you may have less failure. I don't know that we have a solid state disk around long enough to actually know that yet, to know how bad the impact's going to be. But over time, physically, that's what we're going to be dealing with is now doing that. So that's pretty much it. I just want to make sure that everybody's clear, at least from a solid state standpoint, 
the impact it's going to have from forensics, when you're looking at it, you will actually start to see things that look like they're white. 